We are a Nerd Eternal Network. Alright, welcome to Icons of Waterworld here on the Nerd Eternal Network. I'm your GM, Jason. And with me today is Mike, playing Everlast. Happy Sunday. Taylor, playing J303. Howdy, howdy. And Zach, playing Starbound. Good afternoon. We're a player short, but we shall persevere. All right. I think everybody remembers what we were doing last time. There was a series of teenage disappearances in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, three of our heroes, Starbound, Jay, and St. Moon, were already in Shreveport. Starbound and Jay live here. Uh, St. Moon has been spending a lot of time here since he's kind of got an unofficial team in the area now. <laughs> and Everlast was visiting on behalf of her employer trying to get some books out of St. Moon. Through circumstance, they all got drawn into this investigation, traced it back to a biker bar called the Roadkill. Uh, brief skirmish with, the, with some of the bikers, tracked down the leader of the uh, gang, or excuse me, club, and... Uh, was it? Starbound that actually talked to the person they were working for on the phone. Yes. Uh, and they've got the name uh, Rudan. And had set up, had, had convinced her that they had a delivery for her. I'm going to have to be the decoy for this, aren't I? Are you implying that I cannot be a young human being? Oh, I wish you would. <laughs> I don't. I don't relish the thought of uh, having to be a decoy. Trust me. The things we do for justice. I mean, if we run by the good, <clears throat> by the goodwill, I'm sure I can con cobble together a convincing disguise to. To disguise myself as one of the youth. Hello, fellow youths. Starbound trying to disguise himself as one of the youths. The youths, and all I can picture is Roger from American Dad <laughs> in his costumes that fool everybody except family. That that, sh that should be your icon mm -hmm. for the game. Should be Roger. Huh. I could imagine Roger screaming about the fact that he breeds by spore and it will soon take over the world. In 20 years! I can't do a... can't do a... Who is he imitating? Richard Lynn? No, uh, who's that guy? That old school celebrity he was. Who's that, that man? Uh, RuPaul. Uh, not, not RuPaul. Yeah, it was Richard No, it's like the, the guy who was on... Um, who, who was in the um, Hollywood Squares? The Center Square. Richard that dude. Lynn. Yeah, I knew also Lynn. Who now? Uh, one of those, he, he, you know, he started as like a comedic actor. He was on Bewitched and then he just basically was like, did like all the, you know, all the talk, the big talk show circuit. And it was probably most famous as being the center square on the old Hollywood squares TV show. And his voice, I, I believe was the model for uh, the voice of the Roger character. Ah, I think Weird Al may have done a song about that. Yeah. Paul Lynn, that's his name. Paul. No, no, I think that's somebody else. Classic. So anyway, you're still be making this delivery uh, on the south side of Cross Lake. I think it was somewhere in this little area. Near, um, okay, oh, you said Cross I, Lake. Yeah, I think it was somewhere. Oh, you just highlighted it, didn't you? I missed it. Yeah, it's somewhere around here. I forget exactly where on the shore, but just, just somewhere kind of abandoned on the shore, you know, fairly sparsely, oh, yeah, sparsely populated. Uh... And she had told you basically 
After dark, for sure. I forget how much after dark. Not that it really matters. None of y'all have a curfew, so. That may change next season. But anyway. Uh, so you're supposed to be, meet there this evening. So what sort of planning and plotting and uh, shenanigans are you going to get up to until then? Well, I guess, uh, I guess uh, Elena is going to have to uh, concede and bite the bullet and offer to pose as a the, the delivery for tonight's uh, arranged, arranged rendezvous. Although certainly there's nothing uh, ever less real, just less than uh, having to play captive. She's had quite a bit of that for uh, for our superhero career. She feels she's oh, being tight. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Last time you were a captive, you chose to do it, despite me telling you not to. Ah, hoisted on my own petard. You built this crucifix. Who would you think was going to go on it? <laughs> okay, I was. I, let's 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 take it easy on the crucifix references here. Sorry, forgot, <laughs> for for kind of forgot you go for a different pantheon. <laughs> oh, don't say don't use that word either. Hug. <laughs> Is there even a pharaoh to tell you what's real anymore? Uh, well, there's no, like, um, no Pharaoh, just a, just a god of judgment who, uh, I'm technically, uh, betrothed to. That's a long story. The point being, uh, if we want to do, um, if we want to, uh, follow through on the setup of this, of this, uh, uh, arranged de decoy mission, this decoy sting, and then I guess I will be the, I guess it would make sense if I were to pose as the, uh, as the uh, captive teenager to be delivered to this Brodan. Well, I'm sure Starban can go recruit some people from his school. <laughs> I, I yeah, it's an extracurricular. Job after <laughs> Tell him it's for extra credit. He's a janitor. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm not saying today's youth are the wisest generation we've ever had, even though they probably are going to be. But even I, at my age in high school, would know if a janitor was offering me extra credit. It was probably a lie. <laughs> You're a creep, aren't you? Uh, unless you have a, unless your school has like a, a, a substantive trade program, then he might get away with it. Then he would be an accredited teacher, and I would know about it. <laughs> I'm just now thinking of trade school classes to teach you to be a superhero. Yeah, it's called being a sidekick. <laughs> eh, it's right. a little more of an internship, but anyway. I have read some novels where they're the same thing. That is literally what a sidekick is. It's just a superhero's intern. <laughs> I've also just, read that. Either way, it's unpaid <laughs> labor. Sorry. But anyway. Actually, they got paid minimum wage in the uh, thing I was reading. Hey, perfect. <laughs> All right. So I assume Everlast is going to track down some uh, something other than her costume to wear. Yeah, I uh, well, I, I I did bring civilian clothing. We can just get back into that. Oh, that's oh. right. That's right. Jay says while putting three hundred dollars slowly back in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we could have gone shopping, but okay. The thrift store was an option. Sure. I'm rich. But all right, let's just tuck that back away. Might need a disguise for Jay. Just something to make him look less less obvious from a distance. Like a hat the old hat and trench coat trick. Maybe Jay makes glasses. a sound. Uh, pulls the tender less back out. To the thrift store we go. Black leather there's a fake beard. No, no. He would clearly go for a uh a large trench coat and a fedora and white gloves and black boots. Nothing suspicious at all. Ignore me, me, I'm a perfectly average man. Who are you? My name's uh uh Q. 
I'm I'm from Street Fighter. How you doing? All right. So anyway, and y'all were going to see the Ninja Turtles. How could it not work for Jay? They also had rubber masks in Ninja Turtles. I'll find a Nixon mask. <laughs> um, also, they they would be uh, Rudan would be expecting uh, the cast of idiots we apprehended last, last issue. Quite right, because we were posing, we were posing as them, right? Or someone was posing yes, as them. on the phone. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, it, of course, not every you know the the folks y'all busted at the bar are probably not the entire club. So who knows which ones Rudan has met and not met? Good point. We know that. Well, we know she's most likely met, or someone's most likely met the three we, the initial three we we kidnapped, the ones who tried to kidnap me. Um, it, Starbound, are you able to create, like, modify people's visual perceptions with your with your telepathic powers? Is that a thing? With proper training, I could I could perform such a task. I am afraid I have never really dabbled in such art. So what you're That's saying is you'd require some extra inspiration if you were to do such a thing at, at, at the last at the at the quick moment like this. It would require a determined effort on my part. That's what I meant to say. Determination, inspiration is <laughs> a different game, isn't it? I think so. But That's not fair. fourth wall breaking. <laughs> He only probed it. You were the one that breached it. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't sound like y'all really got anything y'all gonna do other than you know just getting dressed for the part. Uh, what vehicle were you gonna take, or were y'all gonna take a vehicle? A uh, little uh, rental we've been driving around in. Yeah, I think okay. we told her to be in a different vehicle. Yeah. You know, you're right. I believe he did mention specifically what vehicle y'all were in. And should we assume that? Um... Santa Luna has uh, found some other business to uh, take him away from. Oh, me. yes. What will Santa Luna be doing? Uh, I'm trying to think of something that would be important enough to pull Jay away from this. Uh, we, we could say that the grandma just like is still in control and just she just decided to um, um, grandma off to somewhere. And yeah. we, we all know better than to try yeah, to argue but, with her. But stating... Stating that the grandmother doesn't care about abducted children. Oh, that's fair. It's just kind of like, mm, Well, I don't know she, if she was she, the nicest person exactly. Yeah, but she was pretty quick to jump on helping at that's the true. start when it was abducted children. Well, maybe mm -hmm. we know that the Star Forgers dabble in blood magic, extraterrestrial blood magic, but blood magic. So maybe she's trying to run interference on supernat on the supernatural end. Oh. Doing research on maybe he's fallen back to his loft and is doing research. Yeah, nice. That's fair. Or had to teleport back down to uh, New Orleans. I think is where he actually makes his permanent home. So he might have more of his stuff down there. Whoa, I think we'll go with that route. He's on a bus. Just put him on a bus. <laughs> Don't make instantaneous travel possible. He's on a bus. <laughs> He did have a motorcycle. That way we can have the entire adventure happen <laughs> without him being able to magically come back. So anyway, he teleports home. Uh, but we'll be, busy, we'll be busy researching while, at least while tonight goes down. You know, unless y'all start losing badly and then maybe he'll pop back up. Since I do have <laughs> access to his stats. All right. So night falls, everybody is dressed however they wish to be. Uh, you drive out to Cross Lake. Uh, you park in the appointed spot, uh, kind of on the shore. Uh, you're there 20 minutes or so. And something rises up out of the lake. 
Uh, it is maybe the size of a school bus, uh, about that long, a little bit wider than that. Uh, you know, clearly some kind of submersible. And it kind of crests up out of the water, you know, just slowly as it moves to shore. It's not making any noise. He kind of slides up halfway up on the beach, and then the front end sort of opens up. Uh, two. Let's see, it's dark. Two kind of bulky figures kind of come walking out. Uh, there's something kind of mechanical about their walk. Uh, Jay, you probably noticed this quicker than the rest of them. Because yeah, clearly they're not even trying to look normal. <laughs> Jay, three three will record this walk cycle and possibly use it later. <laughs> That's a very robot-looking walk. It's perfect for me. I believe this is our our meeting, fellows. But anyway, they step out of the vehicle, the uh, uh, submersible, and kind of step either side of the door and are just standing there, or with the opening, and they're just kind of standing there. You know, their heads are clearly looking in your direction. Though in the dark, at, at you know, this little distance, you can't make out any real detail about them. A minute later, a smaller form comes floating out. A uh, little hovering form, gl two glowing eyes on a head almost as big as the rest of the body. Uh, it's got two arms. It comes floating out, kind of looks to each side at the robots. Uh, looks over at the at, at your vehicle and just kind of raises his hands like, what's, what's the hold up? Uh, and then starts floating towards you. Should we start walking towards her? Uh, Starbound staying in the because he's the most obviously human. Among like I, I suppose, just signal for whenever you're ready for me to actually do something. All right, I guess Jay will start walking up with the person. Yeah, am I on like a a gurney or something? How how am I being transported? Am I actually walking? And like bound, or am I like am I supposed to be playing unconscious? Um, this is where we should have discussed. That. <laughs> uh, it's probably like you should have had a plan. Probably fake <laughs> binding. This was the plan, champ. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am walking. I'm bound. We'll say I'm. I, let's, I guess, let's face I'm it. Just having you like just snap the bindings and punch a robot into the to the pond is probably the best move we got. Sure. <laughs> the point is, I'm actually walking. And not just like, oh my somewhere. god, it's adorable. Yeah, I can't make it small enough to actually fit on a screen. I don't know what's going on with this thing. Aww. Yes, but we that. can click on it and make it even bigger. Yeah, it is not a. It is by no means that big. Or is it big so enough to make it, make it seem? So is it robotic then? Or is, are all three robotic, or are these the two lumbering things? No, this is the this is the smaller one that comes floating out, and it, it looks at the bearded ones, looks at y'all, kind of raises his hands like what, and then floats is floating out towards you. Okay, so uh, they're the all eyes are glowing blue, and yeah, it's kind of a cutesy robot. <laughs> uh, it floats up to, uh, I guess, Jay. Is there some issue? What's the delay? Apologies. Due to the nature of this one, extra precautions are being used. What's wrong? This one? You drug, you drug us all the way out here for one? <laughs> Empowered blood 
it's a riskier but higher quality. Empowered in what way? You were told to be very careful about empowered individuals. Though I don't guess they could be that powered if, if you apprehended them. And then it's like it's looking closer at you. Hmm. I didn't know they had artificial beings in their employment. Oh. I'm in use specifically for this target. I was... I'm on loan. Hmm, I see. And also with, you know, your usual man being a little... Do you know what the term under the weather means? Suffering some from, from a mild sickness. Yes. Also due to that, my... Or perhaps my an use... excuse for drunkenness. Hmm. <laughs> Fair enough, humans tend to do that. Very well, let me see the... Uh... Or do you have... Is Everlast in the vehicle still, or is she standing out? I'm, I'm assuming uh, that that... it's kind of like being held by Jay kind of thing. Okay. okay. So it seems like Jay is necessary to ah, keep her contained. robot strength. Is he, does he have enhanced strength by any chance? Or? Uh, six. It's definitely bigger than he, regular human, but gotcha. not as big as yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't you running like an eight? That's right. Yeah. Very well. What is the nature of your acquisition? He goes over. He's kind of looking, looking at every last. Oh, well, no outward sign of injury. It's not a mentalist, is it? I know no, you will not wish to, to be bothered with a mentalist. The nature is physical. Hence why uh, mechanical strength is necessary to hold. I don't know why I'm trying to talk in very structured senses with you. You can clearly speak English very eloquently. This, this is very convenient to that. Yes, I've been uh, on the uh, on the planet's primitive internet, a pr primitive uh, computer network for some time now. Uh, J33 talking back to uh, communications with uh, Starbound. What are we supposed to do here? <laughs> <laughs> Do we just let her on and you track her mentally? Starbound, I'm running out of stall time. What do you have to say for bum rushing their guards? What, and just steal the submersible? Yeah, we don't even know where the base is. The submersible. I can hold the submersible. Never last. Dispatch. Dispatch the two bodyguards. Yeah, uh, I, I see him. I'm privy to that conversation as well. I can bounce uh, into her head. If that's the case, then um, she, she'll simply uh, snap out and then just try to punch uh, one of the two big uh, big bruisers behind behind uh, the ringleader here. Okay. Yeah, they're you know yeah. they're twenty feet back behind him because he floated out and then continued forward to y'all. But you can definitely sprint that, you know, she's super fast and even without that, you can spread that distance and, and sock one. Let's make it a charging attack because that's a thing. Oh yeah, charging attacks are a thing, aren't they? Hell yeah. I, I guess it plus one to something. I always forget, might maybe plus one to effect perhaps? Let's look it up in our conveniently organized and never never uh, befuddling uh, word book. While I have a Swifty Luna here. All right, attacking, blocking. Smother me. Is it a charge or a rush? I, I uh, there is something called a rush. 
I bet that's it. Um, and I guess while that happens, I will attempt to interface with the small robot in front to try to keep it from communicating. Okay. And it does add a plus one to damage. A rushing attack does damage equal to the higher of your strength plus one or your movement level plus one. That's definitely a strength plus one. So otherwise I just roll a regular prowess attack. So let's let's do it. Hang on. All right, I'll let all y'all go first because y'all are catching them by surprise. I just generated an 11 total for the attack. Okay. This is prowess. Ooh, they were pretty good. Close. However, you still uh, uh, you still make a solid hit. That'll be for nine damage. Yowch. Uh, Did you enjoy a good brush? Okay, and they've got eight. Uh, oh, they do have some armor, though, so he is still, it is still up, though you have caved in a good portion of his chest, and it kind of slams back against the boat behind it. Okay. Uh, as you run past the, the little bot in front of you, kind of throws his hands up, and it kind of is rot like it's rotating to try to keep you in sight, but you, you zip past <clears throat> and then it starts to turn back towards Jay. It's escaping! <laughs> Jay, what are you going to do? Well, the attempt to interface with it. Okay. Which is basically like a... Since it's robot to robot, and it clearly would not want me to do this, it's like doing mind control with fleshy parts. Yep, yep. Eh. I did the lowest possible roll I could do. All right, it's got a willpower of five. Oh wait, no, that's its awareness four. So seven. So yeah, I'm just I'm just interfacing to to keep it from communicating what's happening to the base. All right, so that is a major success. Let's see, major success on my control, add controlled quality, renew after power level pages. So how many levels of the uh, interface do you have? Rank two. Okay, so you've, you've got its communication software or whatever shut down for, uh, uh, for two rounds. At which point we'll have to, you know, there'll be have to be another roll to see if you can maintain control. Okay. Uh, Starbound, what are you doing when you see this go down? I think I'm gonna seize the submersible with my telekinesis, just to hold it in place in case there's an automated system to make it okay. make it fall back. And what is your what is your power level with the uh, TK? Uh, seven. Oh no! Well, it's a stationary object at the moment, so you don't you don't have to roll to like connect with it. Uh, let's see. Seven weight is a tank or a bus. Okay, so you should be able to, you know, even pick the thing up if you had to. Yeah, I just uh, don't want to risk damaging it. Yeah, yeah. Because that's our way in. Uh, 
Oh, let's see. With my control, is it aware that you've hacked it? Let me see here. It really doesn't say one way or the other. So I'm going to give it an awareness check. Uh, Taylor, roll me a dice. Just a regular old dice? Uh, do you have uh, a technology skill or something? I have a spe I have a rank in technology as a specialty. Yes. All right. Use it. Use your intelligence in that. To see if you're able to do this without noticing. It's got an awareness of five, but it's also got tech, so I can do it to six. And yes. oh, you beat him by one, so he is not aware that he's being hacked. It's from the from this robot's point of view, it's just not occurring to him to radio the boss. <laughs> uh, so he doesn't realize you've done anything. So he turns around and uh, kind of jets after, you know, goes off in the direction that uh, Everlast did. And I will follow behind at a quick pace. Okay. Acting like everything's all right. Okay. Uh, the little robot's moving pretty fast. Not super speed fast, but it's moving at a running person's pace. I've got two ranks of super speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even without that, you, you could <laughs> keep up with that trouble. I will keep up with this small child. Uh, <laughs> but it's not attacking Everlast or anything. It's screaming at the other two robots to stop her. And it seems to just be going, just be heading into the submersible. Are you following it into the submersible, Jay? Yup. Uh, its head kind of rotates halfway around. I don't need you in here. I need you out there catching it. <laughs> How many do you have any considering she just bounced one do you have any more in there No I only brought two you were supposed to have these things contained before you bring them to me <laughs> Well I was containing it I didn't realize she had super speed she didn't use it when we caught her uh, Terrence I I'm sorry my parents were dumb We'll go out there and help. I I I. He'll turn and start to walk. And getting ready to interface with the submersible. All right. <laughs> uh oh, and the two big robots outside. Uh, the one Everlast is engaged in tries to punch her. Looks like I'm hit. All right. And it's got a strength of seven. Let's see. Ow. And that was a major success. So that may knock her back. Uh, give me a give me a strength roll, Everlast, versus their strength. Okay, you don't I go stand there. firm. Yeah, you just take the lit. Yeah, I'm definitely hurting though. Can't take another one of those. Uh, the other robot turns, brings up one hand, and this sort of uh, dish kind of springs out of its arm and kind of wraps around the arm. Uh, and you hear kind of a 
It's almost like the sound of somebody turning a speaker on. Hmm. Followed by some sort of sonic blast coming in her direction. Oh, boy. Uh, so it's trying to shoot you with a stunning attack. I'm covered in cat fur. How do I defend against this? Is that a coordination thing? Yes, yes. It's firing it in a pretty, pretty uh, concise beam. It's not an area effect or anything. Oh, good. Think, uh, if you ever saw the Teen Titans cartoon, think Cyborg Sonic Blaster. Oh, I gotcha. Fortunately, it looks like I dodged it. Oh, yes. You handily dodged it. It's good. I probably couldn't. I might not have been able to take that. Quite possibly not. All right, now, let's see. That is everybody has gone. So let's go ahead and give an initiative roll. on the board that I can then assign. <laughs> oh, I forgot I actually had a token labeled cute robot. There you go. Somewhere I should have the less cute robots. So, um, after we punch the robots, are we just taking the submersible by force? I feel kind of... Well, I think the I think the punching the robots is taking it, taking the submersible by force. All right, so Everlast is coming in at a nine. Uh... And robot one and robot two at six and five. And then cute robot. Whoa, at eleven. Starbound, what do you get? An eleven. And Jay got a eleven. A lot of elevens. In descending order. Okay. All right, so we're now at the top of the regular order. Jay, you're up. Wow, that's actually surprising. Hey, yeah, quick communication. Hey, should I just ignore what the little robot said and just go inside the ship and bother him? <laughs> so that, you know, he doesn't escape. Oh. Well. The robot not escaping is a good thing. Once there's distance enough, I will step. Like, there's distance enough where he can't see, where the little robot can't see me step into the submersible. I will step into the submersible and wait. Okay. Well, once you turn around, like, like you were walking away, it continued on into the back into the submersible. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay in enough where if it tries to close up shop and. 
leave. Oh, you're, so you're standing kind of just inside the door. So if it if it closes, it's closing with you on the inside. Yeah, because it looks like Everlast can handle the two things that are out here. I'm, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I mean, are you hurt? I've been hit, but yeah, I I, I guess uh, you, um, you, you, it'll be, it'll make sense that you would assume that I could. Uh, it's it's a very reasonable assumption that I could take take on this fight. I think you can throw these things into the pond pretty easily. It's a lake. All right. So are you actually going to do anything this round, Jay, other than just step back inside? Um, I will attempt to interface with the undamaged bot to walk into the pond and sit. Okay. Because <laughs> interface is... Because robot to robot fighting... Oh, wait, sorry. That's... That is not the correct one. Okay. We'll go ahead and roll that the correct is the one. correct one. No, wait. Oh, yeah, plus eight, plus one. Okay, yes, correct. All right. Oh, these things are not terribly complicated. No. One of the first things you realize is it's got a little, it's got some security software to prevent, try to prevent what you're doing. Uh, but these things are not self-aware or actual, actual AIs. You know, where the little guy is a self-aware thinking something, you know, thinking machine. Uh, these are just mindless, you know, there's enough. There is enough in there that they can follow instructions, but they're not actually thinking or feeling. Let's see, and you were doing that with the undamaged one? Yeah. So yeah, Everlast, the one that tried to blast you, you, you suddenly see it just turn around and start marching off into the water. Nice. Now the water doesn't seem to be bothering it particularly or anything, but it just... And it's heavy enough that it just, you know, sinks to the bottom. Uh, Starbound. I'm going to step out of the car and put my mental hand down on the robot Everlast is currently engaged with to keep it from moving. Alright, so you're going to try to pin it? Yeah. Alright. Ooh. So that's going to be basically a grapple. Or wrestling, I think is what they call it, yeah. Alright, but you're using your power, so you would roll your power. Versus the greater of the target's prowess or coordination. Uh. Alright, so that is a moderate success. You achieve a partial hold. So we can perform actions, but it's got a plus two to its difficulty. Uh, and it cannot move... Uh, away from you, or in this case, away from the spot where you're holding it. So it can still flail around, but it can't actually, like, run off or anything. And if you get another moderate success, that upgrades it to a full hold where it's just flat-out pinned. It can't do anything but try to escape. All right, the cutesy robot. Jay, from what you're hearing, you from where you're standing, you can hear it further inside. Uh, uh, when Starbrand, Star, Starbrand, when Star uh, <laughs> Bound steps out, it 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 exclaims, uh, Zach, what is your uh, what is Starbound species called again? 
Oh, um... I was just looking at the name earlier. Let's call them... The Volutions, I guess? I don't think that's been used. I'm, j I'm just smashing words. I was letters thinking it was something with head. a Q. <laughs> Quasha is his actual... Oh, that's his actual name name. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never came up with the with the species. I'm sorry. I thought He's I thought that gray. was his species name. Okay. I should I should have beforehand, but no, you're you're fine. That's on me. All right. What well, what what did you decide to call it? Um, Volution. Volution. Fairly well. Like evolution without the e. <laughs> yes. So you hear it's you know something about you know uh kind of oh crap the Volutions here. <laughs> and you hear uh, I say switches flipping but this, is, this isn't the sort of ship that would have switches so yeah but the doors the doors to the front start to close and you hear kind of the uh, from inside you can hear the slight noise of, of whatever kind of a pole shin has got picking up uh, from outside y'all just see the door swinging shut and the entire craft starts to back up off the beach a little bit Uh, and Jay from inside here's a steady stream of what's probably expletives coming from the robot, but it's not in a language you understand. Everlast. Yes, well, since uh, I have a sputtering robot that's uh, that's apparently pinned down, I'll try to put it out of my misery with okay. a simple punch. Punch it. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, you, you shattered into a million pieces. Uh, and where normally those pieces would have gone flying back into the lake with the, the four star bounds exerting on it, all those pieces just break off and then get driven down into the ground. Hmm. Convenient cleanup, thanks. Then it is the dead robot's turn. So it does nothing. Uh, let's see, the other robot you beat, uh, Jay beat it pretty handily, so it's got at least a few rounds before it has to recheck. So it's continuing to either march further into the lake or sit down, depending on what exactly what its instructions were. And then we're back at the top of the order with Jay. Cool. Everyone in the submersible? I don't think I'm in there yet. I'm I'm calling out as is that the plan? Oh yeah. Okay. Now, like and I said, Jay the doors will... are starting to swing shut. So, yeah, Jay will attempt to interface with the submersible. All right. Give I'm a one a trick pony, but I'm doing backflips, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> Let's face it, if you saw a horse do a backflip, you'd be pretty impressed. I would. Alright, so the objective is to continue, like, keep the doors open long enough for the two people to get in while, this, while having the system say that they're still closing. Okay, I got what you're saying. So uh, it'll you got up. a major success. Yes. So no problem there. Basically, where the doors are swinging shut, they then they hesitate and widen just a little bit, uh, giving time for your compatriots to run in on their turns if they so desire. And once they get in, I do want it to close up normally because I don't want to just you know drown a, drown the two things that breathe. All right, so I'm assuming on Starbound's turn and Everlast's turn that y'all will run on board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, and then it's the little cutie bot's turn. I really should have given him a name, so I'm not calling him that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, This is now the third round, so Jay's my control on him requires a roll if you wish to maintain it. Uh, 
I will attempt to maintain it. The 12. Uh, let's see what did he roll earlier. That is three 12s in a row. I'm talking <laughs> That'd be enough to make some people suspicious. <laughs> but I know you don't have any sort of, you know, ability to hack roll 20. Okay, he's still he's still not thinking about communicating with anybody. Uh then Everlast slips in. So the doors Everlast slips in. Just as the boat pulls back enough, it actually hits the water, so some water starts rushing in. Uh, then the door snaps shut, so you know, y'all are standing in, you know, quarter inch of water or so. In his little front compartment. You know, and you feel the, you know, you feel the ship jostle loose as it slides back off the, uh, off the shore and, uh, Starts turning around and probably submerging. Are y'all going to explore the ship or just kind of wait here for it to dock wherever it's headed? Oh, yeah, we're going to get it, going to try and get on the ship. Okay. All right, then, Jay, what are you doing? Um, Am I still interface with the submersible? Uh, to... You're still in contact with it, I guess. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, oh, start. Wait, with... it was, yeah, it would still have the control feature going on. So, yeah. I'm going to keep taking information out of it then. You know, does it have an autopilot system of where it's going so that I know the location to get to know, know where we're headed and all the uh, information? It does know where it's going. Uh, much like the robots, it's not self-aware, but it does have a pretty good autopilot. Uh, it is tapped into the GPS system that, you know, all your... All your Earth-based stuff uses. Uh, the spot that it is, it is headed is out in the middle of the lake. Presumably on the uh, lake bed. Do either... Uh, Jay will look at them. Look at the two... Both of you breathe, correct? Inspiration is a, nece is a necessary action for con my continued life, yes. Cool. J303 will use his gadget power to make rebreathers <laughs> for the two the two <laughs> beings that can die from water death. Water death. Right yeah, it's water death. It's death by water. It's death by existing too long inside water. It's the saddest death. <laughs> Kill by that thing that gives them life. How sad. <laughs> Our... Jay, on Which the is other hand, can be air-cooled for... or liquid-cooled. Yeah. Plus, we are like 75% water, so that seems especially strange to start starbound. Or to J three hundred three. Well, I mean, no, Jay completely understands it. Jay has a fear of drowning. He just knows that he can't. Interesting. Oh, all right, because you're based off of two humans who both are yeah, not J fond of J three hundred three is made from the brains of two humans. It's just neither of whom are. Yes, yeah, so and neither of them are fond of drowning. Right. So, like all the inherent fears and misunderstandings of the human mind, Jay has. But no one in, but no one outside, you know, no one in Meta knows that because J three three is acting like a robot, right? But anyway, uh, 
a rank three gadgets to make a rebreather. Okay. I don't think you need probably but one rank of a uh, of a uh, life support. Probably gives you a uh, yeah to ignore yeah you know, to ignore drowning. Yeah. You know pressure and the cold and stuff like that would be a whole other thing, but you know you're in Louisiana. Granted, it's during the winter, so it is going to be cold. But, but the lake's not deep enough for pressure to really be an issue. Yeah. And I'm sure between telekinetics and super speed slash strength, they can get out of the water pretty okay. Mm -hmm. They just need something to buy them some time. Yeah, but between continuing to soak up information and making the gadgets, that's my turn. Oh, well, Are you reading off a robot or off the submersible? Off the submersible currently for location data. Hmm. Yeah, the... Uh... uh... The submersible does not have a ton of information because it's not self-aware. It's just you know, it's just autopilot to get to certain spots. Uh, a directive not to surface during the day, or really to be out during the day. Uh, I describe this thing as being as long as a bus and a, a little bit wider. It is not as tall as a bus because I just double checked and. and Cross Lake's only about 10 feet deep, so it's not going to conceal much. <laughs> <clears throat> At least that's its average depth. I assume out in the middle it's probably deeper. But... You'd uh, better hope so. Well, we're looking like damn fools to the natives of Streetport. <laughs> Just wading in the ankle deep water. Why have they got that? Uh... Oh, they got rebreathers. It's ten feet tall. They can just sort of hop. Like, <laughs> the Luckily, neither of the other two heroes know that information, so I look super cool. Uh, As you tap secretly a loser for them to know explicitly, this is ten feet of lake water. <laughs> but anyway, the submersible move, moves over the location that uh, GPS coordinates. Uh... And y'all feel y'all your weight shift as it starts is it clearly has come to a stop and then starts to drop. Uh, when it comes to, when it comes to a standstill, it has clearly descended more than the you know uh, ten or maybe fifteen twenty feet out in the middle uh, depth of this lake. And then the front of the boat starts to open. Uh, as the cracks open, light pours through. Uh, the inside where y'all were standing was not lit once it closed. Uh, so light comes pouring through. Uh, you see out where you're clearly in some sort of facility. Oh no, you've shown your hand. You preset this. <laughs> Is that bad? No. It's just we know you preset this like a week or two ago because St. Moon's still here. Oh. <laughs> this is true. He's back. He's he's actually Rudan in disguise. He teleported back home. All right, I'm going to say... Did, I, did all of y'all have 11s? I had a 9. If you're recreating our initiative order. Yeah, I was just going to put y'all back in at the same number. Yeah, I had, I had 11. All right, Jay had 11, all right. They'll save some time. Uh, 
So anyway, that opens back up. Uh, you're in a very small dock area. You know, the front of the ship seems to have plugged into uh, this little base. So on the map you're seeing now, consider this right here to be the uh, uh, kind of the big docking door that opened up opens up in front of the vehicle. Uh, but as the door opens and that door, as the vehicle's door opens and the dock door starts to roll open, uh, the little robot comes skittering back in. Uh, Starbound, you recognize the language it, it's using. It's basically just sitting there going, ah, oh, crap, 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 crap. <laughs> and then it just comes to a standstill when it sees all three of y'all standing there. Hello. Uh, Thank you for taking us to your base. Oh, no, this is, this is going to go poorly, isn't it? Extremely. Uh, technically, I believe by the laws of your, or uh, this planet, not your planet, gestures towards, uh, Starbound. But, uh, I believe this is, uh, trespassing? No, stowing away. It's stowing away on a ship, isn't it? It's trespassing if you You've step, in, if you step into our facility. Law. But see, <laughs> you're stating human law to a robot, an alien, and a person that's been kidnapped. Uh, I, uh, I did not bring her onto the boat. That was also a her. chosen champion. Also a chosen champion of Vance right upon the boat, and here she is. Chosen champion of oh, great <laughs> deity yeah, involved. Uh, of course, didn't want to be referred to strictly as the kid that person. <laughs> yes, yes, but I had to state you in a way where human law doesn't put you try to put you in jail to show that I'm smarter than this robot. <laughs> Oh, that's that's what's important. I uh, I suppose you're going to pummel me now. <laughs> I don't suppose uh, we have to. Wait, hold on a minute. Does it have a weapon system? Uh, not that you're aware of. Yeah, as long as you sit back and don't do anything, I see no reason to fight you. I mean, and, granted, you're you've been aiding and abetting a like horrible, horrible activities, but like, I just don't feel like punching you. Well, I don't Plus, feel like being punched, you, you so you. I'll just go back in here, and y'all. Uh, can no, do... no, I think you should come with us. We we do have to have the submersible still be here to leave with any dignity. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. He looks very dejected as it starts hovering towards, you know, the front of the ship. I'm getting a lot of Marvin the Paranoid Android energy. I have a query. I thought he was just depressed. Yes, he looks over Starbucks. Uh, he was, yeah, he wasn't really paranoid, but I thought that's how they referred to him. I thought that's where Radiohead <laughs> got the reference from. I could be wrong. No, he does have yeah, does have a good Marvin feel to him. Oh no, he was paranoid android. Okay. Anyway, Starbound asked, said he had a query. You're addressing that to uh, to the our, uh, our portal android. Okay. Yeah. What is your Were query? Were you constructed by the star for by the uh, star forged, or are you just hired help, as it were? Uh, I'm a mass-produced model that. Uh, Master Rudan, Rudan has a uh, modified. I'm sort of a personal assistant of sorts. Wow. Okay. So they're just a bunch. So th they're just buying a bunch of off-the-shelf junk and putting out, putting out into the field. No real pride. <laughs> no real pride in their own craftsmanship. <laughs> That's a pity. No offense, of course. I'm I'm quite high end. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're probably just not familiar with it as you. He looks you up and down. Probably couldn't afford me. Ooh. Your safety is no longer a priority. <laughs> I cracked my nose to wait, it was, him up. wait, it was never a priority. I just didn't feel like wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just felt it would be rude. I meant no offense. I, I was merely making an observation. 
Hmm. Just watch your step. However, however it is. Please, please stop talking to the modified Roomba. <laughs> Let's keep moving, Starbound. Is that a slur? That feels that feels a little bit of a slur being directed at a robot. Starbound, I'm a robot. Does it matter how I talk to my own kind? Yeah, we just can't. We, he can, you can make that joke, we can't. <laughs> we should probably just go. The bit's gotten kind of old. It's also like calling a human a caveman. It's not a slur. Technically, you are one, but just a more advanced version. <laughs> I, I'm off for proceeding. What? No, let's really dive deep into this. I feel like it's of cultural Where? importance to me as a robot. No, let's go. <laughs> I forgot right. to dive deeply. We're in the right place for that. So where is it y'all wish to go? <laughs> um, to do I have map data from ServBot? Yeah. ServBot1? Not really. No oh, crap. If I pull back from the map, I lose sight of y'all on the, on the overlay. Oh, this map's much larger than I thought it was. Yeah, well, we're not using all of the map, but yes, it is. It is a fairly large map. Oh yeah, I'm zooming out. Yeah, I zoomed out, and I was like, "Oh, I'm. I've got to zoom out to twenty percent to get the whole thing." No, wait, nope, ten percent to get the whole thing. All right. So anyway, from where y'all are standing, uh, there's some kind of door here. Uh, the wall branches out over. To the uh, the left, if you're looking on the screen, the right to where your characters are faced. But that's really just the wall bends out a little bit and then comes down, so there's really nothing there. But there is a hall that continues down, kind of set to the south. Uh, J33 will look to uh, our two compatriots. So how many of these robots do you think you could fight at once? Just the gauge of how fast we could probably go through this place. Uh, I would say I would need at least uh, two pages of robot if I don't get uh, if I don't take any hits in return, or I say the real world equivalent of that. Uh, two good hits, got it. Yeah, <laughs> I can keep them in. But they pack, they do pack a wallop though. Great. So let's not try to get into too many fights. Plus, they uh, eject, they, they emit um, uh, intense sonic energy. Not crazy about that either. All right. Starbound, are there any specifics to Star Forgers we need to know that would make them uh, oddly dangerous? Hmm. Or are they just May crap? I roll to see. Give me an intelligence roll. How much about them? Yeah, there's some basic information that I will just flat out give you, but yeah, give me a roll and we'll see uh, how much of the more obscure stuff you might know. Rolling. There we go. All right, so that's a major success. <clears throat> uh... They are producers of, let's see, how should I put this? Uh, artificer is probably the term you would use for it. Uh, almost all of their devices use, allegedly use a mixture of magic. Uh, magic is not something necessarily trusted out of the wider galaxy. Uh, or believed in in a lot of places. Uh, but on the major worlds, there's too much traffic and too much evidence of it. So uh, so Star Forgers do a lot of stuff with, with... A lot of their stuff is basically tech. But they always tend to tweak it with something a little more. Uh, weapons and armor designed by them is in high demand. Uh... 
they are not on the galactic scene they are not a huge like intergalactic power uh but systems they control tend to be you know very well defended and for the most part they're very law abiding uh very structured you know that uh you know there was a rogue probably the same rogue now that you think about it uh in Japan that spear dealt with you know that's that became news mm -hmm. And in and amongst all that, it was revealed that the Star Forger are actually in negotiations with the United Nations. Uh, more creepily, it became known that they're in negotiations because they wish to purchase human blood for use in some of their foraging. Apparently, human blood has some sort of special qualities that they're quite impressed with. And that sort of that sort of creepy aspect to them is something that's in kind of the rumor galactic rumor mill. You know, if you've seen the Mandalorian and you hear, you know, the way the Mandalorians refer to the Jedi as sorcerers with some kind of, you know, almost superstitious kind of fear there, there's a little bit of that. Okay. Because most cultures don't really understand how they do what they do. Your own people, for instance, have, you know, nothing to do with magic. Even though they've, they're they massively psychic. I'll be back in just a second. Okay. Sorry, cat. So as far as anything to be particularly dangerous, in, in Earth terms, they're all gadgeteers, so there's no telling what you could run into here. Great. You know, well, the fact that, that she's using off-the-shelf, you know... Robotic assistance, you know, might be her being lazy, or it might be her not wanting to waste effort on unimportant stuff. Yeah. Uh, stereotypically, though, they're very, they're very focused. They're all very focused on their work. Uh, think like D and D dwarves. You know, it's all about work. But of course, that's a gen very broad generalization of it, what you're dealing with as entire species. But... I specifically name drop. They're basically D and D dwarves with blood magic. <clears throat> I have the wrong character in play for that concept for that reference. There goes like body empowerment blood magic or like pull it out of you and stab you with it blood magic enhancing the device there's really no no limit to there's really no telling what they'll be able, be able to pull out of us pull out on us they're brilliant crafter all in all weapons armor medical devices spaceships you name it, they make it, and it works unsettlingly well. Great. That's precisely the kind of situation I want to be in. J marks a small mental note. Hire a star forger. <laughs> Contact the UN. Get their number. Or to... Is it the UN or the UN? <laughs> if I call them the UN, does it sound like I'm friends with them? Wait, no, that was idiocracy. Let's not go that path. <laughs> We've gone down that path enough. So there was a, uh, uh, not to sidetrack even more, but there's an old uh, superhero RPG called Unsanctioned. Where on the character <laughs> sheet, you had to choose whether your character was un unsanctioned or UN sanctioned. Because <laughs> UN was the place that sanctioned, sanctioned the supers. I've never heard of that game. Uh, what was it called? Unsanctioned. You had the main book and you had Big Blue Marble, which was like the setting book. It had some neat stuff in the background, but there were little problems like in the rules I could never find 
in the entire book, I could never find where they told you how much damage you did with a punch, which is kind of important in gotcha. this game. <laughs> oh yeah, that that's a bit of a problem in a superhero game. But uh, but you know, I like that stuff in the background, and I've stolen a lot of the characters used in M M&M and M games and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe they thought it was '90s Spider-Man where you couldn't actually punch someone. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> All right, back on Regardless, back on track. Popping doors. All right, yeah, so you can yeah. pop this door, or you could proceed kind of south. Yeah, let's pop the door. Door. Neat. And I cannot control my eye. Really? That's weird. Ah. It's on your sheet. Let me. Uh... See. Excuse oh, me, I'll be right back. Controlled by his, uh, blank. All right, try it now. There we go. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, the door. Uh, Jay, you walk up, you press the little hand thing on the side. It's clearly, you know. Clearly, the thing to open the door, and it kind of gives you an. Eh, eh. <sighs> I'm going to have to prove my superiority to every electronic device in this place, aren't I? You hear the little droid behind you. I wouldn't get my hopes up about that. I will attempt to interface with the door. All right, give me a roll. Ooh, a 14. All right, that may be a massive success. The door has been locked. The door is what? Uh, you're interfacing with the door, lock. yeah. It has it has been given the command to lock. Oh, uh, about the time then, then the command is dated from about the time y'all stepped through the big door, the big dock door. Oh, so Jay will turn. We're gonna have to fight everything in this building. They already know we're here. Ah, uh, crap. But good news, the door is unlocked and slide the door open. Yes, you have, you have no trouble countermanding the lock order. All right. So the door opens and you see... I'll go ahead and light the entire room up. Even though, even though, you know, some of the corners and stuff y'all wouldn't actually see till you finished walking in. But it's not that big a deal. Alright, can y'all see everything in the room now? Yes. Yes, sir. Presumably. I can see three of the four walls, so I assume it's a full room. Let me give a quick roll for a couple of these people. In descending order. Not that we, not that a fight is required at this point. I just figure, you know, it'll probably wind up happening. <laughs> All right, so y'all are free to proceed into the room. What's uh, that icon in the center there? 
or there's I say two icons in the center. Uh, this one here is a large robot, bigger than the ones you faced outside. Ugh. Obviously, more heavily armed. Uh, this one is some sort of alien life form. Uh, in an outfit that looks like uh, it's wearing a sort of robe, but where the robe is open, it's like it's almost like it's wearing. Imagine somebody wearing like a blacksmith's apron, but with kind of a robe over it. Uh, there are various tools attached to the apron, and you know, at, at the belt and along the uh, you know the apron up under the robes. Uh, pretty much like the picture. It's got the big kind of domed head. And it is surrounded by all these glowing uh, canisters, basically. Mm. Is there anyone inside the can? Or are they just empty, glowing tubes of mysterious fluid? <clears throat> uh, They are full of fluid. As well as people. Okay. Ah. So not a room we want to get into a fight in. And she's standing in the midst of them with a heavily armed droid. Are these teenage uh, figures? Uh, the, the vast majority the of them, yes. Gotcha. You know, they've all got masks attached to their faces, so they're clearly not being drowned in this stuff. Mm. You know, there are tubes running into them and out of them. Uh, some of the tubes are clear, and you can see that there is blood being pulled from some of them. You know, the tubes are about the, about the size of, an, of a normal IV. Hmm. Uh, with group sanction, uh, Starbound's gonna step into the room. Oh, thank goodness. I didn't want to be the first one to step in. <laughs> <laughs> Rudan, I presume? Ugh, the Volution. I had heard one of your people were, were here in the city. You're trespassing. My friends out. call me Quasha. You may refer to me as Starbound. <laughs> then I just hold a hand out, fingers clasped to the air. And then I just return to a normal standing po posture. Well, according to what I've read on you, your ship's busted, so you're kind of earthbound. <laughs> oh, nice. Is that and what J3, this is about? Are you here uh, to steal uh, my uh, ship? Uh, J303 will shout from the back. <laughs> Earth is a star to him, you stupid idiot. <laughs> He's no, not stars from are Earth. stars. This is a planet. I, I, I thought you were smarter than that. Both of the oh, both of the aliens are just looking at you, Jay, very judge with very very strong <laughs> judgment in the face. Either way, Rudan, Spear has al Spear has already been alerted to your lo to your location, and they are on th on this way. We'll be on we'll be here presumably within the next several hours. I advise that you simply let the children go. Let my children go and. <laughs> you can be on your way. Your species doesn't have children. They spawn. Or spore. <laughs> that, no, we don't. That, that That's just a joke I say. She's like, oh, biology is not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're allowed to make a mistake, but I say something wrong <laughs> There's a lot of species in the galaxy. I can't study them all. But it's it's metaphorical children. Like se several of these, se several of the people you have kidnapped are are my students. They go to a school which I work at as a custodian. Also, you can really solve the rest of them too. <laughs> Don't they have robots for that sort of work? Uh, well, they they have Roombas, but you know they they can't really do a lot of the stuff that they, that you need done in a 
in a school school, especially cleaning up the bathroom. Let me tell you, they get really mad. <laughs> She's like, I don't need to know how the primitives handle that sort of thing. They poop in the fluids they drink. I said I didn't need to know. They haven't developed the three shells yet, but they will someday. <laughs> You're lucky; those Your are the only fluids you have only to deal on with. Three. J three three silent whispers. Oh shit, we're gonna be out of a job. <laughs> That's why you need to get in touch with those stuff. I mean, uh... Mm. Hmm. How about I give you half the children? That's still a win for you. No. You still look good to the locals. They still look at you as a hero rather than, you know, lynching you like the... like Frankenstein's monster. This and isn't like math where you get to round the up. other half, and you presumably suffer much, much greater harm than we are capable of dealing out to you. I have restraints. I do not know what Spear will do to you. But I did hear there was some unfortunateness in Japan. Yeah, that was an automated base. I wasn't there. <laughs> they did break a lot of my stuff, though. The big robot has literally been looking from Starbound to uh, Rudan and back. Like, he does not understand why this conversation is going like this. I can uh, wave at the big robot. Hello! Are, are you just a combat droid, or do you have an actual personality? I'm self-aware if that is what you're referring to. Ah, fascinating! Constructed or, you know, built off the shelf and modified. Or purchased off the shelf and modified. I am a unique creation. With yeah. some off the shelf, shelf weaponry. Ah, there's a, no, nothing, nothing to be ashamed about that. Uh, I'm in charge of security here. I shall have to ask you to leave. That's not going to happen, not without the children. You know, there's a lot of job, job opportunities for... Frankly, really, really cool-looking security robots in Shreveport. Are you aware that there's a billion children on the planet? A couple of <laughs> dozen aren't going to be missed, mathematically speaking. These children will be missed by me. He turns and looks at his, at his mistress. Perhaps he could direct us to children that wouldn't be missed. Then we could avoid all of this. Those children also have parents and friends and loved ones. You could J three three shouts in the back. You could start an orphanage. Why That's am I a helping dark. you? Dark. Oh yes, the robot comes up with the the average thing of which you could take people who would die otherwise and then help them live longer lives for blood. Oh boo hoo. I don't care about the thing taking blood from people as long as the people are understanding and know about it. It's the fact that they kidnapped all these kids that I'm mad about. You know what? That's actually fair. Rudan speaks up. I'm involved in some very important work here. I oh, simply doubtlessly. need a little bit of their blood. I'm not harming the children. They're being very well nourished. Uh, From what I understand, you're only doing this because you don't have the patience to just wait for a deal to be struck like you do on do with other civilizations on other planets. Or is this something you've done you've done before? There's never been a situation like this. Human blood is unique. What do you mean by unique? We can use it to make our steel so much stronger. Uh, we can imbue it with magical properties. It's it's fascinating, fascinating. Uh, but the, prim the the primitives here are so superstitious. They may they you talk about being impatient for a deal. They may not ever be willing to make one. 
They keep talking about vampires, whatever that is. It's a mythological being that drains blood from victims to empower themselves. The ones that sparkle? Okay, I've seen that film. Uh. So you opt for kidnapping, which will almost certainly ensure that a deal never happens, especially if a second incident gets out. As long as I have what I need, it's not too big an issue. My work is far more important than anyone else's. For the sake of argument, can I ask what it is? Uh, improved armor plating and uh, uh, basically improved weaponry using uh, jacketing the mater jacketing projectiles of the material so they can penetrate virtually anything. Yeah, that's that's very short term importance because oh, yes. in long term, then the armor is going to be made of the same material in short order, and then you're going to be at the same point. Well, if we gave it to everybody, yes, but if we simply kept it to improve our own defenses. I'm all about keeping my people safe. Then you realize the hypocritical nature of you stealing children from another civilization to make yours safer and then being mad that they're attempting to stop you. I'm not harming the children, and they have enough to spare. And I'm sure you have enough planets to spare that you don't need excess material defending it. Your sense of morality is warped even among the more barbaric species that I have encountered in my life. Yeah, well, it's at not some like point, we're talking about a civilized species. Okay, so Everlast wants to chime in at one point and say, "I, I was, you know, you're those those, those idiots you hired were going to make me one of those kid, uh, kidnapped people." And let me tell you, I don't, and none of these other people, no one else here, appreciates being written off as a statistic. No, you don't write off any of us. And and this is stopping now, and you're not going to keep kidnapping people just because you think you're too. Your too your work is too important to be bothered by to be interrupted by paperwork or bureaucracy. That's that's some crap right there. Yeah, Everlast is not happy with with uh with our friend's uh, explanation of business. All the non humans have been sitting around talking about human children for the actual human presence it's just kind of been Yeah, yeah. Everlast is definitely she's been doing a lot of uh fist clenching and and, and uh, yeah. There's been a lot there's been a lot of like uh a lot of grimacing going on right here, and this is and this is and we're not and this isn't up for talking right now. J three who three will turn slightly back. You realize I was given sentience to make toilet seats, right? Anyway, <laughs> what? <laughs> I guess we just jump to fighting now. I was hoping you could hack the robot. She tries to say that as as unnoticeably as possible. Yeah, also, also uh, neglecting uh, proper terminology since I just, you know, referred to the robot as like hacking the robot. I don't know if that's insensitive terminology or whatever, but she's uh, <laughs> she's got her her mind's on other matters right now. She's worried about her people not caring about the feelings of other people now. <laughs> well, she's young. She's growing. She's it's, she's the, it's the indicative selfishness of sentient creatures to care about their own sentience more than others. <laughs> All right, so is she rushing in to do something rash? I think at this point, yeah. Um, although, yeah, it's oh, that big robot. Um, I think she, she. Uh, I think the best thing would be to just try to start um, at super speed uh, and see if she could just like start grabbing canisters and moving them to the. Wait, did we did we close the door on the submersible? No, y'all could lift it open. Oh, okay. I, I think she's going to just try to start um, at super speed 
Uh, I don't know how fast I can go in such tight quarters, but try to just start moving as quickly as possible the canisters to the submersible. Also, probably can't fit too many of those in there, can we? Uh, the bulkiness of the canisters, because you know they are holding a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you 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 could carry all the people if you got the people out, but actually packing all the canisters in there would be a a, a bit of a chore. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, th in that case, um, what if I just tried moving them out of the room just to be out of the, out of the path of the potential fight, like even just keeping them in the corridor behind us just to get them out of the way. Uh, and then we'll worry about, um, extracting the people hopefully after we've uh, dealt with the situation. Okay. So I, right, I'm just so... trying to confuse the, the battlefield basically. All right. So going... With the turn order, I'm going to say Starbound, Jay, and Rudan basically use their turns chewing the fat. Uh, <laughs> Everlast made her statement, and then he's going to rush in and grab a canister. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm just going to assume one of these corner ones is they're kind of close to, to the door without charging the gun wielder. Uh, Makes sense. She zooms past. Oh no, we've given her time to do something rash. <laughs> you know, she runs up, kind of bear hugs one of the containers, rips it up from the floor, uh, which it wasn't attached to the floor, but runs off with it, hoses and line and power lines and stuff to it, snap as she runs off. Uh, you get it back here in the hallway, you know, set it down, uh, All the lights on the canister have gone off now. We had a little thing on the side that was like monitoring, uh, you know, monitoring the subject. You know, that screen's gone black because it's got no power now. Uh, yeah, I um, I will leave that to the smart people to determine how bad of a problem that is. Uh, then it's the robots go because how smart is my character? Things have moved from talking to stuff actually going on. It goes marching forward. Uh, kind of puts itself at an angle between Starbound and one of the canisters. Then has a big shoulder mounted, you know, something slides it from his back over on its shoulder into like a shoulder mounted weapon that he's going to fire at Starbound. I don't like that. He could not. Uh, or. Oh, I've got a, I've got a question. Uh, have I recorded, have I recovered the stamina from the previous fight? Did I get a chance to do that while we were en route? Yes, you could have. Let's see. I think once a day. If not, I think I'll be spending some determination in the next uh, next page. Let's see. The basics. Recovery. Page 44. All right, let's see. Oh, looks like I need at least an hour of rest. Yep. Right, well, so what I'm doing next page. I thought there was something where you could spend a determination to get either your strength or your willpower back. That's uh, that, that, that was my plan for what to do in the next page. Okay. But yeah, that's something you gotta actually burn determination forward. Cool. All right, what was that? Oh, yes, right. He was shooting. Shooting star bound. Energy laces out. Ooh. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. All right. 
I can dodge it. <laughs> it is a coordination. Oh, you just did. barely. Nice. Ah, exactly what I needed. How big is the hole that? How big is the crater that that blast leaves behind? Uh, it's not a huge crater. Uh, it kind of hits the door frame where Starman kind of jukes to the side. Uh, pretty sure that door won't close now because that it melted that door frame to some degree. <laughs> uh, clearly, it's firing some sort of plasma weaponry at you. Are you sure you should be firing weaponry that powerful in an undersea, underwater base? <laughs> All my systems are water resistant. Okay, but is your boss water resistant? <laughs> Actually, if they installed that on you, then that's just poor planning on their part. Uh, then we're back to the top of the order with Starbound. Uh... You know what? I'm going to telepathically seize Rudan. You mean telekinetically? And put him in front of me as an alien shield. You mean telekinetically seize Rudan? Yes. <laughs> because right. I'm a hero. And heroes use human shield. Well, not a human shield. Not human. <laughs> yes, alien shield. I specified that the first time I said it. <laughs> you wouldn't shoot a man with a sentient being in front of him, would you? <laughs> All right. So you lash out with your power. Mm -hmm. you, you, your power closes around where you see her at, but there's nothing there to grab. Ooh. Oh, of course, it's a hologram. Uh, oh, well, well. The presumed hologram of Rudan just kind of shrugs. <laughs> J303. Present. Yeah. Uh, uh, J three three is still having an emotional roller coaster at whatever the mess just happened that Everlast did. Uh, he'll give a quick order. Yeah, get the fluid out of the tank. And make sure none of the wires are tugged to pull out anything in their veins, and they should be able to manage until we get medical help. Please don't do that a second time. And then we'll walk in the room, and you're going to be surprised by what J303 is going to do. <laughs> I know. It's a rare move that I make. I'm going to attempt to interface with the robot man. <laughs> All right. And it's exactly one point above my minimum roll. Oh, uh, he rolled crap too, though. Baller. All right, so that's a major success. So he has the a control quality added to him. It has to be renewed after power level uh, pages. Okay. What part of his weaponry can be forcibly ejected, if any? Uh, the shoulder-mounted cannon can be, which is what he just fired at Starbound. Uh, cool. Other than that, the stuff's pretty well attached. You know, attached, attached. It's part of his own. All right, well, shoulder-mounted cannon, uh, detach. Bloop. Don't let that fire off a second time. And then I will politely ask him to stand down. Because I really don't want to force a being, you know, a, another sentient being to collapse its own body.
Uh, let's see. As much fun as it is to prove my electronic dominance over everything that stands in my way. Uh, so yeah, it lowers its arms. Hmm, this was not anticipated. Yeah, I'm all kinds of wacky. The technology in this planet should not have been capable of this. I'm terribly sorry to inform you that there are being there are beings that go far and above the statistical average of this planet within it. Uh, even yes, among the, the human outliers. populace. And, you know, you're interfacing with it, so you know how unhappy this thing is about what you've just done. Oh, I mean, I'm... Yeah, and he, feel, I mean, he feels I mean, slightly embarrassed. Well, like, I've, I'm also informing him, like, I really don't enjoy doing this to other sentient ones. And, but, you know... Uh, you and, you know, it, it's it. trying to resist, so you know as soon as it's free, it'll be, you know, acting, you know right. coming after you. Yeah, completely <laughs> understood. It's going to be a fight the moment he win. He can win the mental argument. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, then it's Rudan's turn, wherever Rudan is. The hologram kind of walks forward, if that's what it is. You don't actually know. But it just sort of walks up to Jay. I can tell you're going to be a problem. Really want to reverse well, engineer I mean, you too. Well, I mean, I did specifically give you a a situation where you could harvest blood safely. We could go in business together. I have a lot of money on this planet. Because <laughs> mm. surprisingly enough, advanced metals are interesting to a man made of metal. I mean, to a robot owned by... I mean, a robot made of metal owned by a man who's interested. Shit, I am so bad at this. <laughs> you really are, my friend. Rudan's an her head. You're a terrible liar. <laughs> Base well, neutralize just... uh, intruding AI. <clears throat> Ooh. Ah, dang it. And weaponry drops out of the signaling and fires at you. Uh, it appears to be some sort of like EMP-based sort of thing. Oh, gross. Uh, Sounds like a thing that would be bad for me. Yeah, so it's going to be a stun attack, you know, because she's interested in reverse engineering you. So she doesn't want to do too much damage. <laughs> and so what do I have to roll? Uh, this would be coordination because it's something shooting at you. Oh, great. So the base beats worst. you by four. Yeah, coordination is my worst. Uh, let's see. Stunning. One to two. Let's see. Up to two is a moderate, so up to four is a major. Target stun for one panel per power level. Womp womp. What's the power level? Uh, the power level is four. Oof. So you are stunned for four rounds. Well... Mm. So I'm going to put four little colored dots on you. In every round, I'll take one of them off when it's your turn. Ben, everybody in the audience knows what I'm going to be doing in four rounds. <laughs> What's that? Making, I will be taking for this base. <laughs> All right, Everlast, it's your turn. All right, so I see that, uh, presumably. Oh, and uh, the robot... Uh, I think what Everlast, she's going to try to pull off a super speed maneuver uh, to trick. Hmm. I think what she's going to do, she wants to try to uh, trick the, that the Emperor into hitting Big Robot. So I think what she'll do is she'll run back in, grab J303, because J303 is the only target that can be affected by it. 
I, again, I don't know how likely this is to work, but um, then try to run around like um, run around the big robot and try to uh, create a maneuver so that uh, the the Emperor uh, maybe mistakes the J three three for still being operational and fires again and hopefully hits the ro the big robot instead. Okay. Uh. So you're kind. Of, so you're running and you're grabbing Jay, but you're you're kind of bluffing with Jay's now unconscious body. Yes, and my super speed. So give me a willpower roll, and if you've got anything that would help you in bluffing or lying or whatever. Yeah, in fact, I'm not even going to take the turn to. Uh, I'm going to take a risk uh, of not boosting my stamina yet. Up yet. Uh, yeah, let's. Um, I am going to. Uh, May I spend a determination point and evoke my warrior reborn quality since I'm, I, oops, does it go up, goes down. Since I'm trying to basically, um, it's a bit of a creative tactic, but I am still at war with, uh, with the forces of evil here. Uh, hoping for a plus two on the roll. Okay. So I'll just type in the command. I get it. Uh, it's dash or it's um, slash roll, right? Not. I have no idea one. how to do the emotes. Okay. <laughs> plus five for the willpower. Plus two for the uh, termination expenditure. Oh, I generated a thirteen. All right, and this is you're trying to fool the base AI. So what's going to be its willpower, such as it has? So it's. Let's see, it's security software isn't going to help with this, so it's just a, yeah, this is not going to be good. All right, so you basically run over here with Jay. And I'm, I'm just picturing you running around with him making his arms flop. You know, yeah, basically in a circle, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we will, we'll, uh, effectively put the uh i guess we could give the base a confused aspect or a uh or quality i should say uh or wrong target quality or something so its next action which and it'll just go when ruban goes uh it will fire at the uh currently mind controlled uh, or a uh, hacked robot it is now the hacked robot's turn but he's been told to stand down so he's just going to stand there oh uh, starbound got the robot from the hacked shoot yes sir I your go pose go ahead uh I'd say it was your go I suppose I'm going to I'm going to try and break one of well, I don't really have the... Yeah, I'm going to try and break one of the security robot's legs with a telekinetic tele telekinetic blast. Ouch. Okay. We're going to going to burn a determination point to power stunt that cuz I don't actually have the blast power. Oh. That's right, you have always just used it to grapple. Yeah. Captain Psychic Titan, Physical Shrimp. Okay, seven is the number to beat. Ooh, just barely. <clears throat> Literally minimum roll. Alright, how much damage does that do? Uh, seven. Okay, so... Now, are you doing this trying to just do raw damage to him, or are you doing this to put a condition on him, a uh, uh, quality? Uh, raw damage. Okay. All right, then. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. And you said you did seven points to him. Yeah. He's got a little bit of armor. So 
So we'll put his health in there, and then minus 67, minus his armor, so actually he takes that much damage. Uh, you see kind of the armor plating on the leg kind of buckle, and the leg, the leg is bending at a slightly odd angle, but is not actually completely broken off or anything. Okay. No, it is clearly taking a substantial amount of damage, though. All right, J303. I will take one colored dot off. Yay. Three more turns before complete control. Uh, the Rude, uh, Rudan steps next to Starbound. I just want you to know that you have brought all of this on these poor people by yourself. This is all your fault. Computer, initiate, uh, oh crap, what was, uh, oh, initiate escape clause. And then she looks out at the room. Ugh, what a waste. And all the lights and the pods start going off. Oh, that's messed up. And and somewhere in the distance, you think you hear the sound of water running. Oh. And the, you know, and Rudan just walks away, shaking her head. So sad, so sad. And it's the robot's turn. Nobody's watching him, but he shoots down this hallway as fast as his lack of little legs can carry him. Oh, yeah, and that Rudan does not walk, bother to walk towards the door. She just walks down and through the wall. So maybe it was a hologram. Maybe it was just insubstantial. Everlast. So the robot, so the other robots, uh, that walk somewhere, or is that still put? This one here is still put. It was okay. a little cute when y'all had with y'all. That y'all just left in the hallway that oh, ran off it. somewhere. Got you. Uh, okay. Oh, so I uh, forgot. I forgot to have the base shoot at the robot in, that you had set it up to shoot at. Oh yes. Can't Let forget. me make that roll for it right quick. Uh, grab a bit because it's shooting with a five or a six. I think it was shooting with a six. Okay, and the robot has got a coordination of three. With basically a minus two for the... Oh, no, that's right. He did damage, not put a condition on it, so... so uh... Alright, so that is a massive success with a stunning attack. Target is stunned until the end of the chapter, so the robot just topples. Gotcha. Alright. <clears throat> so, uh, Everlast will... Uh, uh, this kind of like panicked uh, in a panic tone uh, ask uh, starbound if uh what's going on with the um with the canisters Rudan has shut down power to the base and now they're flood now they're flooding the complex okay but the canisters are still okay no whatever they I believe whatever life support they have has been turned off oh, oh okay. what happened Do you know how to, uh, can, can you like, uh, do you know how to get 303 started up again? Not in the least. Oh. I, I think it may just take time for a systems to reboot. Hell. Oh. Um, okay, okay. Um, uh, 
Jake I think we just need to silently screams in his own mind. Just yeah. do the advice I told you to do. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to remember what that was. Um, oh no! <laughs> At the start of my turn, before I, 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 I remember you told me not to do that again. <laughs> I remember? I, I can't remember what you actually told me to do instead. Oh shoot! Okay, so I think, uh, barring anything else, I think she's just gonna. Uh, uh, um, see if there's any way to. Uh, if there's any way to disconnect the he one of the one of the uh, one of the teens without hurting them, if there's any way for me to figure that out. All right, so you're out to one of the pods. Uh, yeah, it looks like everything's powered down, so you you know you'd have to just rip the front off. Uh, I mean, with, if, with her yeah. strength, probably not an issue there. Yeah, uh, there is another thing i could think you know oh so if if we need to heal these people like right away there is i i tell starbound you know if if we need if we need a if we need power to heal these people i have i i do there is a way i can get them to that hopefully before we we all flood uh i want to see if i could um activate my my activate my access to my my secret base which we haven't seen in quite a while um, cause I do, I do have a, I do have access to a healing power there. It's not super strong, but maybe it'll be enough to at least keep these people, um, stable. I hope, um, with some determination perhaps. So is that, I, I know if I recall correctly, cause it's been a while. I, I don't think we've actually, I don't think we've actually officially done this in the game yet, but I, I believe I gave a limit where I had to perform a ritual in order to access, uh, the temple of Kebishet in the land of the dead, the that Egyptian land sense. of the dead. That would make sense because the first time you went there was just when you got, uh, yes, uh, uh, when sad. I was uh, taken there, and then the, when yeah, when it took me there, um, without my control. The second time I tried to do the ritual, it didn't work because the pantheon uh, had uh, cancellation magic in place mm -hmm. or wards in place to stop that. Yes. But here, I would like to enact that ritual to get there. If, if nothing else, it gets us out of the flooding uh, underwater base, right? Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I don't think there's any. Well, you tell me. What do I do? I need to make a roll for that, or is that something I just have to perform? I would say it wouldn't take. It's not a roll. It'll just take a couple of rounds to do it. Okay. Hopefully, more uh, not as many rounds as it takes to flood this place, or for these people to for these poor people to drown in their own fluids. But I'll, I'll try to do that. And yeah. All right. So then, it's Starbound's turn. You see, uh, Everlast start like chanting and I'm not sure what all else is involved in the ritual but me neither but uh you know you've been around magic people so you you kind of guess he's doing something like that and it's your go hey uh, exactly. oh thank goodness he's he's arrived in time <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, perfect timing you can come Please. and stop this madness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey, unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sorry, I, I, I just I was hoping to actually get home earlier, but that was not the way it was gonna happen. Ah, oh, you're fine, you're fine. You got here exactly when we needed to. <laughs> Who wants to catch up? <laughs> it's Santa Luna. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, long and short, we tracked the star. Tracked. Uh, we're in the Star Forger's underwater base. Oh. Uh, Rudan has currently fled the building, and it's has flooding. also shut. Yeah, flooding it, and has cut off life support to the uh, people pods. Oh, nice. Yeah, things are going just great. Oh, and Jay is still stunned for three more rounds. He got out. And oh. Everlast is enacting a ritual to open a portal to her uh, her secret base in the Egyptian land of the dead. Uh-huh. 
Well, it's an escape. And I, I have some healing capacities there that could hopefully help our, our teenagers or my, my, my fellow teens. All right. I was, I, I'm stunned. No, no, no. Other J, J303 is stunned. Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, the base had some sort of automated weaponry that hit him with an EMP blast of some sort. All right. Let's see here. Okay, you've got the roll 20 going. So. so if you want to, Curtis, go ahead and give me an initiative roll for St. Moon, and we will get him in the order. All right, hold on. And that's going to be... Six. Four, I believe. Okay, so that's a seven. Well, that conveniently puts you in at the end of the order, so that works. All right, so basically, Jay is going to teleport in via his magic uh, when his turn comes up. <laughs> where he had been off researching, uh, trying to find something that would help. Uh, Sorry about the bender, guys. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but it was Saint. It was a uh, Saint. It was a uh, Starbound's turn to go. Uh, I'm gonna run down here and just stick my head through the door. I is this a door? Uh, no. That one is some sort of computer equipment. Okay. Um. Is there still power going to it? Yes, the computer system still seems to have some power. Uh huh. I'm gonna see if I, there's some way I can't. I don't know. Do an emergency override. <laughs> okay, give me an intelligence roll if you've got any kind of computer use or technology uh, specialty. That's Come on, six. Yes. Versus the computer's just baseline security features. Mm. So that is a marginal success. Uh, which is either just barely a success or could possibly be a failure. Let's see yeah, yeah, yeah. how we want to do that. Uh, mm, I know what I'll do. You have two choices. You evil monster. Uh, <laughs> either you can reboot the life support in the pods, basically power the pods back up, but not do anything about the water, or you can close the vents that are letting the water in, but the pods are still turned off. <sighs> and, it's, uh... and, you know, and it's not that Starbound is making the decision between these two. It's only one of them is going to work. I'm just letting the player choose which one. Yeah. I'm going to say close the vents letting the water pour in because if the ritual... I I'm going to take care of the biggest pressing issue, which is we're all about to drown. Now, water is if starting to come through the door into the room y'all are in, so... Yeah. You know, the vents opened up in like the hallway or something somewhere else, but it's it's yeah. gotten deep enough out there that it's starting to pour into this room. Alright, but you hear you hear that running water sound, you know, turn off. Hmm. Uh then it is again J three oh three's turn. Down to two.
Then it is Rudan, wherever Rudan is. And somewhere else in the base, you hear what sounds like a large door opening. And a sort of humming of... Let's see, I'm trying to think if anybody in the current group has had experience with really high-tech... Uh, anything spaceship... Really oh, well, star Starbound. <laughs> uh, you hear what sounds like a ship starting up. Uh, kind of like a, well, I guess it'd be about like, you know, if you heard a car start up, you could probably guess whether it was, you know, just a four door versus like a diesel or something. Yeah, it sounds like somebody's personal craft starting up. It's not super loud because, you know, it's high tech stuff. It's not like a rocket going off or anything. But, yeah. But clearly her ship was somewhere in this basin. She must be making her escape. In fact, in the computer, you might even be able to see the docking bay. Which was way down to the south. Oops. That was covering the area, not revealing the area. Alright, what is Roll20 doing? It's best. I don't think it is doing it. <laughs> I think I was clicking on one thing and it was doing the exact opposite. So anyway, if y'all scroll down, y'all can, can see y'all can see your ship parked there. You know, and she's run to the ship and the little the little assistant bot has run to the ship. And the ceiling is basically opened up, and there's a field keeping water from dropping down into it. But it's opened up where the her ship can get out. Probably something, probably a similar setup that the submersible used. I'll be right back. Which, of course, means it's Everlast's turn now. <laughs> oh, wait, no, did I skip past? No, no, because that's because Everlast goes under nine. All right, we'll go ahead and jump down to uh, to Saint Moon then. All right, so you had been off researching this. To, uh, well, we never say what you were researching, but blood magic. Oh, that's right. You're researching blood magic to see what the Star Forger might be able to do with human blood or something. Uh, you lost track of time, so you weren't back before you know this went down. Uh, you were able to zero in on J-303, you know, teammate, you're familiar with him. You know. And, and so I've, I've now appeared in an underwater base. It's flooding. Yep, you what? appear and your boots are in like quarter inch deep water. So not enough to be getting up, you know, over over the, uh, the soles or anything. Not enough to panic about yet. Well, we're underwater, so yeah, panic anyway. Um, you clearly recognize that Everlast is doing some sort of ritual. Are there any... Um, what, what, what opponents are around? Uh, you see a collapsed robot in front of you. You appear next to Jay, who... It looks like, it looks like Jay is only standing robot. up because Everlast is still holding him. Well, actually, she's already doing a ritual, so Jay's probably laid out, too. So you're, you basically appear next to two laid-out robots. Uh, Starbound is across the room working on a computer. You see teenagers in all these little glow, what looks like glowing pods on the map. Right. Uh, the pods are no longer glowing, though. It's like, imagine really narrow kind of back-to-tank sort of things, the teenagers floating in there with masks on. But there's like, you know, little screens attached to it, but nothing seems to be lit up. Ooh. And uh, first, I'll, I'll point at J three point three, 
Three oh three. Is is he rebooting? That's for somebody in the room to answer. Everyone in the room is he got hit with some kind of electromagnetic weapon. And the kids, the kids. Um, what happened to their tanks? Rudan shut them. Rudan shut them down as part of their <clears throat> as part of their escape plan. I was able to stop the stop the water running, but not much else. The water from flood. Keep, I was able to stop the flooding, but not much else. Ah. Uh, I guess that engine I hear is Rudan. I assume so. It sounds like a like a small craft starting up. I assumed it was. I assumed Rudan was actually a hol the Rudan we encountered here was actually a hologram, but it appears they have more abilities than I anticipated. Give me half a second. I have an idea for the kids. Computer control. I wonder. Okay, well, while you're figuring that out, we'll jump back up to Everlast and let her let her take her turn. Oh, right, but she was doing the. I'm ritualizing. All right, so this is the second turn. So the conclusion, basically, she keeps doing it. At the end of the thing, some sort of swirling portal, obscured by mist, kind of appears. Unless you had something else in mind for how the. Sounds good to me. Maybe, maybe uh, how about sand instead of mist? No, that'll work. That'll work. It's like there's a portal and just a sandstorm going on the other side, kind of visually. And you might, you probably see like, well, this will probably take us like, actually, you know, this would be, uh, if I remember correctly, the temple is like, was hidden underneath a cr another crumbled temple because mm -hmm. it was, it's hidden from Anubis. So, Maybe, maybe not, maybe not a sandstorm. Maybe it, it, it just opens up straight into the the hidden. It'll probably hold up, open up straight into the hidden temple. Okay, that'll work. Yeah. So they, anybody in the land of the living looking through it would be seeing the inside of this, inside of your base, not the kind of generic land of the dead. That's right. So, okay, it opens up. You may even see some of your sir, you know, kind of servant spirits over on the other side. Yeah. Though they cannot cross the doorway to this side. Right. All right, Saint Moon, have you figured out what you're doing? Saint Moon is. He used to do he used to know a guy that was a techno mage. Which is actually he always thought was kind of bullshit. But you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna try it. I'm going to um Use my magic to duplicate computer control. Okay. Now, are you going to spin the round and make the roll, or are you going to risk Grandmama coming out? Uh, well, guys, I just sort of stepped in here. How do we have time for me to, to spin the round, do you think? I, th I think perhaps. I'm uh, gonna say yes. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Mike. Were you about to say something? I uh, basically said the same thing. I, I guess it depends on what he what he's planning on doing. If he's going after my, my um, idea is to use computer control to open up those tanks and get the kids out. Oh, um, 
Yeah, well, I'm. Uh, you, you do see. Well, you do see Everlast opening up a portal. So I don't know if you. Right. right, but I mean, I'm talking about just getting the kids out of the tank so we can go to. The... Oh, I see. The door. I got you. It's teamwork, man. Teamwork. <laughs> yeah, that that probably. Um, yeah, I, I I think I think you have time for the sure. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not. That'll be a much more delicate way of uh, getting that rather than just the brute force side I was using on the one. Uh, and you would notice a spot on the floor that looks like it ought to have one of these tubes. There's a few or uh, cylinders where it looks like there's like you know electrical torn electrical wires and tubing, like somebody just walked by and snatched one up. Nice. Oh yeah. I guess, right. I guess I guess Rudan took a snack. Sure, let's blame it on Rudan. All right, so you're spinning around getting this spell ready. Uh, still got to make a roll, though, right? Yes. So what power level are you, getting, are you trying to duplicate this power at? Um, I'm going to do it at 7. Okay. So the difficulty is 7 plus a die roll, so you need to beat, you need to beat a 10. Rolling your... Is it Intelligence Occult or Willpower Occult? I think it's willpower occult. You don't, or do you roll your actual magic? Let me check. Yeah, you'll, you might want to double check because on that one I'm not sure. Even though one of my characters uses magic, it's not my strong. All right, take so the page of preparation. All right, you're doing that. Cast spell. Choose the power effect. Pick the test. The difficulty equal to the desired power level. Choose the ability you use to make spell casting checks when you acquire the power. Either your magic power level or an attribute, perhaps in enhanced by a specialty. Most often a cult. Yeah, I'll use magic because magic's higher than any of my attributes. Okay. I, I think I think that's how we've been doing it. We I just blanked on it, so. Yeah. Magic plus your occult. Alright, you succeed. So you, you know, next round you'll have the spell, no problem. Let's see. Then after J, we're back at the top of the order with Starbound. Okay. Uh, well, y'all, do you do y'all feel like you have the situation in this room on lockdown? I can feel so. you have the. All right, so everybody's comfortable with me um, ducking out of the room? Sure, especially if it's to do something about uh, Rudan. Absolutely. I was just going to take a look around. Okay. But uh, yeah, 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 I'm going to chase after Rudan. All right. Uh, I'm going to open, uh, go through the door. Or okay. first open it up, I guess. Well, it's still open. The oh, damage okay. it took when it got shot, it's not, it hadn't even tried to close. Right. Step out in the hall. Okay. And I'm gonna try and rip one of the engines off. Yeah, was a... All right. So as you run outside, you see the ship is lifting off the off the uh, the pad. Uh, you can see where the ceiling is opened up, and it just looks like there's water just floating up there. Uh, think about the like docking bays in Star Wars, how they had the force shields that stopped the air from running out. Yeah. Same sort of thing. You've seen this kind of tech, you know, all over the place. All your big ships and space stations use it. Yeah. And you know it will allow the ship to pass through without any trouble. Yep. Oh. Crossing the my fingers. Though you also recognize that this ship would not be fa capable of faster than light travel, which means she's got a full problem. She must have a full fledged ship somewhere. This is like her shuttle or something. Great. Sounds like something to pull off the records if we're able to bring this thing down. 
Well, I just didn't want, I just didn't want Starbag to get his hopes up that he could, you know, take her ship and leave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna go steal, I'm gonna go steal her car. Ah, oh, crap! It's not gonna be fast enough to go. Oh, it's a gremlin. <laughs> Yeah, uh, roll to 12 to telekinetically yoink an engine off. All right, so that's going to be versus the... Oh, let's see here. <clears throat> Structure of a spaceship. And its armor. Because you're essentially trying to damage it. Uh, but you'd already, you've already paid for the power stunt for the blast, so you've still got the blast for the scene. All right, so it's going to roll its defenses. All right, now that is a ridiculous amount of handling for that kind of vehicle to have. <laughs> well, I guess if it was in space, it would make more sense. So I'm going to penalize it substantially. All right, so that's a major success. So you definitely hit it. And you're doing how many points of damage? Uh, seven. All right, so seven minus its armor. Where's my pen? All right, you do not success, succeed in pulling the engine off. Though you see some of the engine housing crumple... Uh, and you hear the squeal of, you know, you're your causing, uh, definitely causing damage and kind of the, uh, not just to the outside, but, you know, as you're pulling out, you're, you're damaging, like, the frame of the ship to some degree. Yeah. Uh, it's getting loose. You think, you know, if you're given a, if you're given another little while, you think you could, you could succeed in pulling this off. And the entire ship's kind of jolting around. All right, J three hundred three. I'm down to one. So after after next round, you'll be ready to go. Uh. Let's, oh, then it's Rudan's turn. Uh, you see a small turret pop up off the top of the ship and turn towards you, Starbound. Is it a t-shirt cannon? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it hits you in the head, that would hurt anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think Rudan's the type to make t-shirts? If only this was the rocker. <laughs> oh, there she is. There's her stats. Uh, so this would be coordination. She's using technology to attack you. I don't, I don't guess her technology should factor into it. All right. Oof. Give me a coordination roll to avoid it. Eight is the number you want to beat. Oh, nice. Using uh, your amazing abilities, you tilt the ship slightly to make it miss you. <laughs> so a huge, uh, basically like a small trench gets burned or gets blasted in the floor next to you. You are pretty sure you do not want to get hit by that gun. that did not that stone floor did not take that blast or metal and stone whatever whatever the floor is made of did not take that blast well at all is it like blasted smooth or does it look look like molten uh 
it's fairly smooth. It's kind of, it's, it's, the very edges are kind of red hot for a second, but they start cooling pretty quickly. But, you know, it's a ship-based weapon. Yeah. As an individual, you don't want to get hit for that. Yeah. Uh, oh, then it's the robot's turn. Let's see, what would the little robot try to do? Beep. Uh, over, let's see. You hear over the bases like PA system. You know, you hear the robot's voice. All of you hear this, though. The rest of you don't necessarily know what he's talking about. Sir, if you cause the ship to crash within the base, we cannot be held responsible for whatever collateral damage may may it may occur. Uh, I'm not saying the ship would explode, but uh, certain components of the ship might explode. Hmm. Just a thought. <sighs> uh, that's his turn. Uh, we are back up to Everlast. So... The portal has been opened now? The portal is open. Okay. So, uh, but um, when uh, Santo Luna started casting his spell, did he, uh, did he uh, voice out what he was planning to do with it? I know I know the play, as a player he did, but uh, would, would we be aware of what he was planning on doing? I, I would think so. Okay. In that case, I'm going to hold the, I'm, I'm going to, Hold my move for when he activates that spell to uh, safely release uh, the people. Or actually, no. I, I what I should do is I should run in and start uh, letting the staff of at the Temple of Kibbush, at the um, I guess the the keepers of the temple, let them know that we've got a lot of people who could use some healing, um, or who may need some healing or at least stabilization, and uh, uh, ask that they or ask that they uh, start preparing for them. Okay. I, uh, I, I see from, you had a, you have a doctor that was from the thirties, I think. Yes. Uh, let's see. Did that, was I smart enough to include that character's name in my write-up? I think you did at some point because I've seen the name. That's I don't remember what it was. But okay, yeah. she rushes in, starts shouting orders. The doc starts getting the medical bay ready. Not that he would call it that, but uh, the infirmary. Right. Uh, and just kind of, oh, and, and somebody else is just gathering up kind of the random folks because anybody can help move some of these kids. You know, around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and just for the record, the uh, there's a there's a big serpentine um, aesthetic to the uh, since uh, Kevashet is a serpent goddess, so that's that's kind of the design aesthetic of what's going on here. All right, then we go to Saint Moon. Oh, here's the name, Ibrahim Barsoom. That was anyway. It. That's it. All right, Curtis, so what is St. Moon going to do? And I am going to use my new computer control powers to open up those tubes with the kids in them. Pods. All right, give me a roll. And I'm going to roll on my power level, correct? Yes, you will use your magic. Well, the, yeah, the spell level. <clears throat> All right. Uh, all at once, all the pods here in this room, uh, the faces slide open. Uh, well, first, the liquid 
first the fluid all seems to drain out. Uh, then the things slide open. Uh, as they're slide open, you see the like IVs detach. So you've got, you know, the kids are just all kind of slumped down in here. Uh, they're all wearing... Uh, it's kind of uniform, you know. The boys all have the kind of just kind of white briefs on. Or uh, about like boxers. You know, everybody's dressed. It's like it's a code approved comic. <laughs> but they're all kind of generically white. You know, it's got a very... You know, not when, when quite hostile tanks, down, but... When they were in the tanks, they weren't just covered by strategically placed bubbles. Right. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, yeah. But they're not awake, right? No, they are not awake. And Everlast, you know, there's there is one pod out in the hallway that was actually like unplugged, so you might have to go do that one manually. Yes. <clears throat> Starbound. The ship is still trying to leave. If you don't stop it this round, it's going to be gone. Of course, the little robot was implying that if you stopped it this round, it might explode. So, yeah, what do you want to do? I'm going to call his bluff. And I'm going to try and hit one of the other engines with a telekinetic blast. The same engine or a different engine? A uh, different engine. Okay. Actually, you know, yes, same engine. Same engine. Okay. Oof. Kind of a whiff. Well, it all depends on what uh, she rolls. All right. So that's a tie, so you do half damage. Uh, and you normally did seven points of damage. So we'd half that, and I think it would be four. So it's a little bit more of the armor crumple, you know, armor plating crumples. But no real damage to the ship this time as it manages to... Uh, as it manages to kind of get up and in, into the water, and it, it, is, it is out. But on the plus side, it does not get a chance to shoot at you on its way out. Alright, J303. So this round ends with you basically rousing back up. Everything's coming back online. Alright. The, the people in the room. Uh, you hear two distinct separate voices that are not J303's voice go off at the same time the first voice going dad did you did you spike my drinks again and the second voice going stephanie i'm so hungover i feel awful as j33 is getting up <laughs> what <laughs> remember j303 is a product from two people basically <laughs> taking copies of their brains and memories into a robot to because they were too lazy to write AI script. So they Just... built a machine to copy their own minds as AIs and slap them both in the robot. Which sounds so yeah, infinitely more up. complex. Yes, that's the joke. <laughs> but they were too lazy to too. write code, so they built a machine to do it for them. <laughs> Because that way they could do multiple combinations and it would just be easier. and They could just have whatever expert they needed in the chair. Alright, so combat's basically over at this point. Uh, the base is not flooding. In fact, even the hangar bay door shuts after the ship's gone. Uh, you do have to manually unload the one that you hauled out into the hallway. 
Uh, but it's not that difficult. You know, you tear the door off, the fluid flows out, and then you just have to kind of unplug the the IVs. Uh, you know, like actual IVs, they're designed where when you detach the hose, they don't just start spurting. The, you know, the IV closes. But, uh, it's convenient because that'd be bad. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, but, it, you know, it appears she was using actual medical technology for this, not, you know, just sticking them with a Capri Sun straw. <laughs> uh, so you managed to get all of the kids loaded into Everlast's secret base. Uh, yeah, the doctor starts examining level. them, uh, comes back and tells you he's pretty sure that they've just been sedated. Uh the kind of magical healing stuff you have access to there, you know, burns that out of their system pretty quick. So you, you start waking them up. Uh, Starbound, some of the kids, of course, recognize you. Uh, they recognize you. They might, they probably recognize J303. And St. Moon's been in town long enough that any of them that are kind of superhero aficionados... You know, might be aware of him just because he has done. Y'all have done some public stuff here in town. Uh, Everlast being in plain clothes may not draw as much attention, other than the fact that she's ordering all these people around, and these people are like in cosplay costumes. You know, <laughs> this guy is like a '30s professor. This one looks like you know an ancient Egyptian. But uh. Uh, so anyway, you you know the kids seem to be fine. Uh, the doctor is prescribing you know iron supplements for a couple of them. Uh, much like the setup that Spear busted, you know she was she was using them to, for blood, but she was not taking enough to actually damage anybody. Uh, let's see. Y'all had y'all actually contacted Spear? Or were y'all bluffing? I can't remember. I was bluffing. Okay. I'm Do you contact to... Spear about this once you get everybody back to town? Or do y'all keep the secret base for yourself? Uh, hmm. Put it to the group. Do we keep the secret secret base to ourselves, or do we hand it over to the absolutely trustworthy government agent? Hmm. Uh, J three J three three will interface with the base and collect all relevant information. Uh, the shutdown was a bluff. Huh? It turned all the lights on the pods off, but didn't actually shut the pods down. Yeah. Uh, the water was not going to completely flood the base. Almost it, as if uh, Rudan actually cared about the not continued use of the base and people. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh. Well, mad scientist is not necessarily mass murderer, you know. Uh, let's you see, mean, eventually... Only when it's in the interest of science. <laughs> uh, eventually, right, so... the down droid wakes up. Uh, by then, y'all already cleared the kids out, so it wakes up to an empty base. And if y'all come back, it's, it is not immediately hostile, because it's kind of like, I, I got no orders to cover something like this. Clearly... You know, the boss has moved on. So it doesn't know what it's going to do. Uh, Would you like a job? <laughs> <laughs> well, we now have the secret base we could use a guard for. Uh, if y'all had just abandoned the base and let it, or, you know, or damaged it somewhere where it flooded, J33 is going to knock on his door a week later as his robot limps up with a busted leg. You said there were a lot of employment opportunities. Because <laughs> it's self-aware. It's supposed to protect Rudan, but she's gone, so it needs something to do. Sounds like we have a new misfit. Uh, he stays out the, out the house with the other Jays, completely overwhelmed by the fact that any, any one of them could take over his mind at any moment. Oh, that's... <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about a paranormal. Nightmarish. 
Well, they never do it because they don't enjoy doing it. But he just knows. It's like it's like living next to a professional boxer in an apartment. You know he can just beat the crap out of you. But why would he? But he won't. That's rude. Uh, anyway, so uh, you show back up with the kids. There's a lot of fanfare. Uh, you know, makes national news. Uh, what do you tell Spear? Because they're going to come asking questions. Um, honestly, I give it to him straight. Yeah, yeah Everlast I mean, is it doesn't naturally trust um government authority a whole lot, but uh, she's willing to put that aside since um the more the you know the more resources devoted to um, finding Rudan, the better. Uh, they let you know that they did detect the the vehicle taking off. Uh. But they weren't they weren't getting a good reading on it. It's uh you know, after after Starbound brings it that he damaged the ship, yeah, they're like it you know, their their best guess is that it was cloaked in some way. But that the damage was it was allowing, you know, radar to pick it up just every now and then, but uh but they're not sure, you know, eventually they lost track of it. And they're not sure where they went. Uh now, do you tell them where the base is, or do you keep it? Uh, you know what? Sure. Let's let's keep the base our little secret. <laughs> uh, I know I won't be bringing the boyfriend here. <laughs> well, if you teleported him in, he might not realize he was underwater. <laughs> Casually opens up the window on a morning and then just sees <laughs> seaweed. <laughs> ah! <laughs> exactly. Goodness. Uh, are all of these talks with Spear private and isolated? Uh, considering y'all, y'all just show up with the kids, yeah, they, they'd come to town and you know request. That you come by and be debriefed, or brief them on what happened, I should say. J three hundred three will des- describe the base in detail, tell them exactly where it is, and go. Yeah, they want to use it as like a hideout, as their own little base. You guys have no use for a, a random underwater base in Shreveport, Louisiana. Just let them have it. Full of alien technology? The technology is so minor and unimportant. I'm a robot that has multiple copies of myself in a base made by, you know, like a, you know, in a nice house made by a dude, and I could physically take over the base electronically. It's not advanced. <laughs> it's different. It's not advanced. The agent speaking to you contacts his superior and cuts a deal with you. They have you know, no problem with, with, with your group using the base. <clears throat> they just want a full report from you on the technology. It oh, may not I mean, be impressive, I, but, you know, it might be something, you know, they might be able to get something useful out of it. I, and I've already interfaced with the base and have the information. I just hand it to them. Okay. Spear is fine well, making that deal. Here is everything important about the base. If you need to assault it, here are the entry points. <laughs> yeah, like, just don't tell them I told you this. Let them believe it's their little secret base. It's so cute. Because <laughs> J-303 does not want the government to be an enemy. And they already knew the ship took off from the water. They know there's something under it. Yeah. Uh, J-303 will not attempt to, to be smarter. He is a loser. But, uh, you know, and like I said, as long as you agree to give them that report and they go over that information. Because you can't forget, you know, Spear, the, the the actual supergroup, is based out of a spaceship, so they've got access to to some of that kind of technology. It's a proud super tradition on this Earth. Uh, so anyway, as things are wrapping up, you know, y'all all talked to Spear, y'all met back up somewhere. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the next day. Uh, Everlast is probably getting ready to head home. The 
and then you know the news crews have been out and trying to get you know talk to you and get filming and all that and you've had you've had uh grateful parents coming by and talking to you, and, you know, all kinds of stuff the old superhero pat on the back kind of thing <laughs> um, when you know like i said y'all meet back up and just kind of out of the blue uh saint moon and starbound you both are hit with it's like the worst panic attack you could imagine hmm. something is very wrong somewhere uh everlast and j303 you know you see them suddenly you know look panicked and kind of you know have a freak out it lasts for about a minute uh, at this same time, uh, over in Boston, uh, patients would be having the same sort of panic attack. Uh, not sure what's causing it, just a feeling of wrongness. Uh, let's see, Wolf Witch would likely be having it. I'm trying to think of what other of y'all's characters are. Kind of magically or psychically. Uh... Maybe Recluse? Recluse's danger sense. Every, everybody that has a danger sense would have it going off. Um, Would Slapshot's hockey stick know what, have anything affecting it? Slaps. I'm about to say Slapstick. Uh, Slapshot. Feels it's not a panic attack coming from the uh, quote unquote hockey stick. It's just more of a comment it makes. Oh, I didn't think it was this world's time yet. Uh oh. Oh. What? <laughs> that, that's obviously I was overreacting. <laughs> Nothing to see here. But uh, was that the hockey stick? Who was? Well, who made the? I'm sorry. Who made that comment? Was it the hockey stick? Yes. Yes. Cool. Slapshots hockey stick made the comment. Oh, didn't realize it was this world's time yet. <laughs> Nothing foreboding about that. <laughs> I see the season ball. finale in the distance. Uh. But this all happens as over the mid Atlantic, uh, a light appears in the in the in the sky. It's not terribly bright. It's it's time zones. It's during the day, so it wouldn't even be noticeable if you weren't close to it. Except that, that light stretches down, and then it opens, and there's like blackness on the other side, and three figures float out. And then that rip in the sky kind of seals behind them and they each depart for a different part of the world hmm. so this is the last panel of the comet you know they step out and then you just see them kind of zip off in three different directions okay i don't like that <laughs> it's fine <laughs> they're just stopping by for some coffee and bagels you know they just like to prank magic users and psychics we're gonna make everybody freak out <laughs> on a worldwide scale All right, but that wraps it up for for these guys. Uh, Rudan got away, but you saved all the kids, so I'd count that as a win. Secret yeah. base is a boon. Well, the not so secret base. <laughs> uh, the unknown to the public base. <laughs> so how are you gonna get back down there to get submersible to actually come and go? You don't know. <laughs> Jay, can you hotwire submersible? <laughs> yes. In fact, he already has at least once. <laughs> there's there's very little electronic in this world that can handle me. Oh. Apparently, very little electronic in other worlds that can handle me either. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that wraps us up for today. Uh, hope anybody that comes by and watches it later uh, enjoyed it. 
Hope you'll check out check out our other episodes and meet us back here in two weeks. Uh, hope you guys I hope you guys had fun. I had fun running for you. Yeah, uh, glad Curtis was able to make it for the last little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry about that, y'all. Hey, life no, comes up, fine. man. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's family. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Ignore them until they stop inviting you to things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, I've been your GM for the day, Jason, and with me has been, uh, I like throw somewhere else to start. Curtis playing <laughs> St. Moon El Bruja, or Brujo, how do you say it? Uh, Curtis playing Everlast. Zach playing <laughs> yeah, Starbound. Hey, hey. And Taylor playing J303. And you. we will see y'all next time.